Hello, everybody. This is Keith Silva Sr. coming back to you once again for part two of how to get into the film industry like I did uh, as a teleprompter specialist or whatever it is that you would uh, love doing. Uh, but I'm talking about how I did it. And uh, what I presume is the easiest way to get into the film industry and on a studio lot. Uh, uh, as an employee, not to just jump over the fence and, you know, illegally. Uh, so I am a teleprompter specialist, and I have been a teleprompter specialist. So some, some of you might hear it as a teleprompter operator for the most part. Uh, but we, we and uh, the, the company that I work with as a freelancer, we refer ourselves as, a, as teleprompter specialists because we have many years' experience of working with teleprompters. So with that, um, let's talk about the equipment. Uh, the first video that I I uh, recorded was all about how I got in the industry, uh, what I do, you know, where I went, and uh, some of the steps that brought me to being a teleprompter specialist. But today I want to talk about the equipment that I use. Uh, a lot of you have seen a prompter or a teleprompter before and not realized it. You would see it on <clears throat> a uh, newscast. You would see those monitors on the cameras in front of the newscasters, and you see the words on there that they're reading. That's a teleprompter. Uh, so now with that teleprompter, there's a teleprompter operator, or as in my case, a telepr teleprompter specialist, because I have many, many years experience. And you might be saying, well, what's the difference? The difference is somebody who they just call over to run and scroll the text with them, some paddle or a device that they have, they're just operating it. They're not a specialist. They don't know how to make a lot of changes. They don't know how to underline color. So they don't know how to do a lot of not anything but scroll the text. As in my case, I know how to do all of that. I know how to do all of that and then some. Um, so I specialize in teleprompting. Uh, so let's talk about the equipment. Okay. So first off, the equipment that I use to load the prompter gear on is a cart. I need a cart, right? Foldable cart. I have a small cart and it expands to the larger size. Uh, need a cart. One of the uh, basic equipment that we use in teleprompting, we hold in a Pelican case, watertight air, um, Pelican case. And in that case is a teleprompter monitor. It's a 17 or a 19 inch monitor. It has a special frame with a special glass, tempered glass, 70-30 beam split. Could be different for those out there that are using a different beam split. Uh, of glass in their prompting uh, company. Um, but just generally, it's a special glass uh, split with special material in it, a 70-30 uh, split difference to make it reflect uh, really well the text that's in uh, reflecting from the monitor or that is coming from the monitor. So a basic teleprompter monitor will have a frame on it that will be closed on top of the monitor. So this is the top. Now this is the frame. So now the frame has the glass in it. And when you're gonna mount it or put it in front of a camera, you would lift that frame of the with the glass on it and it has a shroud on it, a black shroud. And you put that shroud over the camera, it has a little hole in the back of the shroud with a string of elastic that you would tighten up around the lens so that you get a tight fit so there's no light coming through the uh, fitting around the shroud. So the prompter goes like this, see? So the prompter's down here, the monitor. Here's the glass with the frame on it, and the monitor is reflecting the text here up to here. And the camera is back here coming through the shroud through the glass. Only the talent could read the text on the glass reflecting from the monitor. So that's one of the basic, very basic 
teleprompter setups or equipment is the monitor with the frame of special glass on it. Now, in, in the back of the frame, it has threads, a holes with threads on it that you could mount bars on it so that you can mount it on a special plate that we have. Every company has their own plate. Uh, there are various amounts of teleprompter companies that create teleprompter equipment. So the prompters that uh, we use use steel bars, and these bars will screw into the, those holes. As we mount a waffle plate onto the tripod or a dolly. So that's the other piece of the equipment, the bars, the rods that will attach to the back of the frame to mount it. We have a mounting plate that will mount on the tripod or, you know, when I say tripod, it's like a camera tripod, you know, that you would use if you buy it, uh, Best Buy, wherever, Walmart, uh, H&A, whatever, h and H, wherever you get your tripod. But these are studio grade tripods uh, for film, television, commercials, all that kind of stuff. Um, a lot of times in my early days when I started prompting, we would uh, be mounting, or I would mount on um, Sackler 30s. Sackler is the name of the tripod. Sackler 20s. Uh, so things like that, and they go higher you know, and lower. Uh, so you mount that waffle plate. So that's the other piece is that plate that mounts onto the tripod. Those rods go into the plate that have holes with screws on it or latches. So when you put the rods through the holes of that plate, you would tighten those screws down so that it doesn't slip off when they tilt it forward or back. Uh, now, if needed, there's another little plate that goes to the back of those rods that you'll slip on the, the rod to put a weight in the back in case you need to counterbalance it. If you get a very good uh, mounting of the plate and the monitor, so here's the monitor with the camera, right? With the monitor, I'm sorry, with the prompter monitor. Here are the rods coming out of the monitor. Here's the camera. So in the plates down here, if you get to mount that plate in the in the prompter, in the in the perfect position, when you let go of the handles of the tripod, it won't move. It'll be perfectly balanced, and you could tilt it forward and it'll stay. You tilt it back, it'll stay. So having a perfect mount the first time out is outstanding. Um, there are times when you have to take it apart and then mount it back a little more or mount it forward a little bit more because the weight is too heavy in the back or in the front. But the camera people, the DPs, they call them director of photography. They know how to balance their tripod. There's a lot of gadgets on there to tighten up the friction for it to go forward and back and to stay in place. And they, there's a lot of little tricks that are, are done to get that to balance properly. So getting back to the, the gear, the equipment, you have the monitor with the glass in the frame. You have the rods. You have the plate. And then you got, of course, the power pack that connects to the, the monitor, so you can plug that in. Then I carry a whole bunch of cables, power cables, video cables, uh, SDI cables. They're digital cables. Or in my case, I use also analog because I still do a job for a company that uses analog monitors. And we're already into the digital cabling and digital monitors and all that. So I have a bunch of cables for video and power. Uh, I have a table that I purchased uh, myself. You know, it's like a three-foot table that I mount all my gear on, my laptops. I carry two laptops, one for main prompting, one for a backup. I have a third laptop also for when I have to download scripts. Because they could give me the script on the scene, uh, uh, on the set, wherever I'm at. They'll give me the script right then and there on a USB stick. They can email it to me. Uh, they could give me, if it's a very short script, they give it to me on a paper and I'll type it in. Um, so the equipment, once again, laptops, three laptops. Uh, I use a uh, decimator, which is a, a unit, a power unit that um, has... HDMI signals on the back, and then it has SDI 
BNC bayonet nut connectors on the other side. And this little red box, the decimator, controls the signal. It boosts the signal, and it controls multiple ins and outs for multiple monitors that I need to run. Let's say I had two prompters on tripods, on sticks, we call them. And then I have a DSM monitor, which is a downstage monitor, in the middle. So I could run all three of those out of that one decimator because it has four ins and four outs on it. So I could connect up to four ins and outs to the monitors. So I have that decimator. Uh, I have a fan. <laughs> you got to have that fan to keep me cool. Um, I also have tape. I have to have a lot of tape or I could tape things down on my my tables that I uh, put my equipment on for the laptops, uh, power strips. I have multiple power strips that I use. I have minimum of four laptop bags. Uh, that's just for the basic prompting, for basic teleprompting, um, is the monitor, the rods, uh, the plate. That's very basic uh, teleprompting. The laptops and the gear that I use to load the script on and download scripts and run the whole script, that all is always a setup. That's always, always set up. Uh, what changes is the setup of the prompters that they request. So we have, once again, digressing into a basic prompting. That's just the basic prompter in, the, in a Pelican case with the prompter monitor, the frame with the glass, special glass, the rods, and the plate. And, of course, power stuff in there and things that you need, tools to mount stuff. Then we have what's called the presidentials. The presidentials is named the presidentials because it was used for presidents in the beginning. Presidents were the only ones who could afford using those kind of systems because they were so expensive to try to purchase or to use anywhere else. So they're called presidentials because presidents – were the ones who started using that style of prompting. And so getting into what they look like is a little story before that. When I used to see presidential debates on TV when I was a youth, uh, I used to see this glass in front of them on each side, the, the left and the right side. And I thought it was bulletproof glass for them. And it ended up being that those were the prompters. They were prompter glass reflecting the script from the monitors below. So with presidentials, you have two monitors, okay? Two monitors, square, uh, 17 inches or 19 inch monitors that are in the case or, or free. You know, there's different versions of presidentials. Uh, I was trying to avoid names here, but <laughs> uh, a little plug for the company that uh, our company uses, uh, Prompt Response. We use uh, everything as uh, Telescript Pro. Telescript Pro is a company that uh, uh, the uh, owner of the company, Prompt Response, has been using for many, many years, and uh, it's a very sturdy brand. So these monitors that we use are uh, inside road cases that were built by another plug here, a uh, Greenberg teleprompting by Jim and Karen Estoshin, and there's another gentleman there that I've known for years and years, but I don't say his name very often. I uh, Forgive me for not remembering your name at this time, brother, but uh, he's been around with them for many, many years, and I've known him for years and years. He works with them and helps them as well. Uh, and he might be doing other stuff or might be a part of the company now, too, because he's been with them for so long. But Lynn, or, or, uh, not, Lynn was the owner of Greenberg Original, Lynn Greenberg. Uh, and then... Uh, uh, Karen, Jim and Karen Estocian uh, were the ones who bought it. Um, I was like, oh, shoot, I gave out their last name, too. But I'm sure it's on their card, you know, on the Internet. If you look it up, Greenberg Telephone, I mean, their names are going to be there. Uh, Prompt Response is the company I work with. Uh, I freelance with them, and I have been uh, with uh, Susan. Uh, she's the owner of the company for many, many years now, and she's a lovable, awesome person and a very professional teleprompter specialist. Um, so we are uh, getting back to the equipment. We use Telescript Pro uh, monitors and the cases are built by Greenberg, uh, Jim and uh, Jim is from Greenberg Teleprompting. And it's awesome. I love using 
this system because in this gear, because when I take these cases to set them up in any kind of job, they're rough, they're tough, you know, so they have a handle on top and on the sides and I carry those things, those monitors in on my dolly and I roll it to where I got to set them and place them. Most of the time it's in on 45 degree angles of a podium or a lectern. Uh, and I grab them, I sit them down, I take the tops off of them. The tops have the glass inside of the, the lids. So I set those aside. We have a shroud. It has a shroud that we put around it, a black shroud around the, the road case that has the prompter monitors in them. And then after shrouding them, I put the poles on there, those long black poles. On the poles, there's some clamps that hold the glass. Once those clamps are on there, then I mount the glass on there, the prompter glass, the special glass, the tempered glass. And uh, I angle them so that the speakers can read the reflection of their script from left to right, right to left. The presidentials, once again, these are called presidentials, okay? And that's what they look like. Two monitors on the floor, black poles going up, the glass on top on 45 degrees of the podium or the lectern. Sometimes you might see one in the middle of a stage. Uh, like when I was uh, rehearsing with uh, Michael Desmond of the Monkees. I, I, maybe I got that last name wrong. <laughs> but, you know, the monkey, Mike, Mike, oh, Michael from the Monkees. What is the last name? Desmond. Desmond? Michael Nesmond. 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 Okay, yeah, there you go. I got it from a vocal source on the side over here, Kathy. <laughs> so anyway, um, thank you for that. So gear, basic prompter, basic prompter gear, presidential gear, and then we have stage concert. We do concerts as well. So we have wedge monitors that go on the stage and they look like speakers out on the front of the stage or downstage. When we say downstage, that means it's actually the front of the stage. When you say upstage, that means the back of the stage. And the reason for this is the stage is built at an angle. It's flat. And then as you go to the back, it goes up slightly. So that's why in live theater, they would build it like that so the people in the back could see the people in the back of the stage. So if it was flat and you were in the back of the audience, you wouldn't be able to see the people in the back. So they built it at an angle. So when the people were performing in the back of the stage, people in the audience in the back could see them. Backstage, front of stage. Front of stage uh, or upstage is the front. Backstage is the back. Um, so anyway, I've, I've, I'm getting uh, sidetracked here. Uh, but anyway, wedges. We have wedge, prompter wedges. We also have just regular monitors, flat screen monitors. If they just want a reference monitor, uh, basic 32 inch, 24 inch uh, reference monitor, uh, we have those as well that we can use for uh, prompting. We can place them anywhere. Um, one time I even used a computer monitor on the desk because the, the scene was this person uh, working on his desk, looking at the monitor, and in actuality, when he looked at the monitor, his dialogue was on the monitor, and I was scrolling his dialogue for the scene uh, uh, as he was looking at that computer monitor on the desk. And anybody looking at that scene would think that he was just looking at his work, but it was actually me scrolling the text for his dialogue. So that's how sneaky we could get with you not even realizing uh, what we're doing to, to prompt for the actors and uh, – people out there that use a teleprompter. So we also have what we call like up close in your face teleprompting. We have small monitors, small little prompters, a little monitor, little glass, little shroud that mounts onto cameras that are carried around on the shoulder or portable or um, steady cam. We have little prompters for that as well. There's a thing called the jib. If you've ever been to a concert, uh, there's a long, long arm, very long, and it has a camera at the end. And that camera, that long arm with the camera swings all over the audience, over their heads. Whee! 
and it's picking up the scene of what's going on on stage and it gets close ups and stuff like that. It swoops down. Well, we have prompter monitors to put on those as well. There's an array, uh, a, a lot of prompter gear that we use for many different variety of events and scenarios for what the people who are producing the events need. Uh, we try to accommodate uh, any, just about any kind of prompting that they would need. Uh, we even do, you know, what's called over the shoulder. I could get two 24 inch uh, flat screen monitors, put it over the shoulder, which is like behind one of the, the speaker's shoulder. If there's doing an interview, like facing uh, the, uh, the guest and then the guest facing the host, I put a monitor behind the guest's shoulder and then I can put a monitor behind the host and the guest could read his script off of the shoulder of the host and the host could read his script off of the shoulder of the guest. That's called over the shoulder prompting. Uh, there's a lot of tricks to prompting uh, over the years that I've gained the experience from. And uh, I do, I've been doing this for over 30 years. And the reason for this is because I love it. I found the niche of what I love to do in life. And it was being a teleprompter specialist. Um, in the early days, the equipment was very heavy. It was bulky. We used a lot of lead weights, big generators. I humped a lot of gear on the beach when we do beach scenes. I worked on this uh, a, a scene for a movie Pearl Harbor with Ben Affleck and every, whoever else. Uh, there was a hula hoop, hula hut that was on the beach there in Malibu. And I worked on that that scene there, and I had to lug so much equipment through that sand. And I did it myself. Now, sometimes you get hands that, from the production that will help you, but they're also helping all the other people bring stuff to this to the sand on the beach. But I paid my dues in the early days of the, the early 90s. And um, very heavy stuff, very bulky. Uh, and also the big difference between the way the gear that I used in the early days to now is it's lighter, thinner, the gear now. Also, the script is produced, written, I should say, written by the writers and then emailed to me for the most part. Or I get it on scene or on the set with an, a USB. Or they'll just say, what's your email address? I'll email it to you right now. Or they'll give me a small page. You know, if they know it's a lot of script. I'm not, in the early days, I used to type in scripts this thick. For shows like People's Choice Awards, Golden Globe Awards, uh, you name the award show, the scripts were that thick. They were huge. And sometimes we'd have to have two operators, and each of us would take half of the script and type in half uh, or half of the script. And there were times where there, there wasn't an operator available to help you. And I would start early in the morning, like 4 in the morning, typing this script up for this award show and barely get done with it by showtime, by maybe 4 or 5 o'clock in the afternoon, or even sometimes even earlier, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock. So just a little bit of tidbit, uh, tidbit of information on the side of the gear list uh, of what we use. So let's try to uh, – there might be something I'm missing too um, in the gear list of prompting that I use uh, other than – well, let's reflect back on stuff I talked about. Uh, I, use, I use a cart to load my gear on. We have a basic prompter that we carry in a Pelican uh, case, which consists of a teleprompter monitor, the frame with the glass in it, the special glass, and the rods and the mounting plate. We have presidentials that uh, are two carrying cases with the prompter monitors inside that. Uh, poles, metal poles that are telescopic. I can raise them and lower them manually. It has clamps on top that I mount the reflective uh, paddles. We call them paddles uh, for the presidential prompters. And they go on each side of the podium, the left and right side, at a 45-degree angle. And people stand at the podium. They read like this. Hi, my fellow Americans, thank you for showing up. I appreciate you coming here. And uh, you all brought me a bunch of great gifts. Thank you very much. I appreciate you. Um, that's like that's how a presidential prompter system be used. You look to the left, you read, you wait for a period break, you come to this side, you read this side, wait for a break, you come to this side. 
That's how presidential prompters are used. Then uh, we have the uh, jib uh, prompters that mounts on the jib the, for that crane that moving all over over people's heads. We have in your face prompters, people that are carrying it on the shoulders, portable or the steady cams. We have mounts, prompter mounts for that. We have the downstage monitors that go on the stage, which are flat screen monitors, uh, reference monitors. We have the wedge monitors for concerts when the uh, celebrity um, uh, singer is going to be needing those prompters for his lyrics. Uh, yeah, they do use those, you know. So if you've been wondering uh, how they can memorize 100 songs in one night, uh, more likely there's a prompter there prompting their their lyrics, uh, which is okay. If I was a singer out there on stage and I was popular, uh, I definitely would need a prompter as well so I could look at my 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 uh, lyrics every so often because, you know, I don't think I would remember them word for word uh, on every song. So there's, uh, yeah, there's multiple, multiple prompter systems, the gear that we use. Uh, I know I'm missing some stuff, but you get the general idea of how much gear we use. It's quite a bit. Uh, and like I said before, I always, always take the laptops with me. The laptops are always set up. They were always used. And um, they are what run the script that they give me uh, that I put into the laptops for the actors or the the uh, corporate personnel or the, the politicians or celebrities and all, whoever, you know, needs it. So long as it's uh, legit and paid for. So anyway, uh, I don't know how long it's been running. I didn't have my clock... Uh, set up so I can see the time that I've been talking here. But once again, what, um, what I'm talking about here is the gear that I use in my prompter world when I go out and do a job. The first part of my videos about how, to, how I got started in the film industry and how you could get started like I did, that's part one. Part two is all about the equipment. And um, the third part is going to be about the equipment and how I use it. And the things that I go through uh, when I'm on a job, the uh, fun stuff, the not so fun stuff, crazy stuff, uh, things were pretty cool. The benefits, the you know, the swag that I could collect and a whole bunch of stuff that I'll talk about on the third part of my videos of being a teleprompter specialist in the film, television, concert, corporate and private industries. So. If I forgot anything, please leave it at the, in the comment section below. Please like this video as it helps my channel and subscribe as well because that also helps you uh, get informed of other videos that I'll post uh, either about prompting in my film industry world or music world or my songs or whatever for uh, my channel. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you got uh, a takeaway from this that was pleasant and, and worthwhile for you that you can use. And maybe someday you want to be a teleprompter specialist and work uh, in the field that I do. So I wish you all safe uh, blessings. And until next time that we talk and chat about teleprompting and uh, the world that I'm in, you all take care of yourselves and each other. Bye for now.